I think that all this stuff is crafted. I don't I don't even know necessarily that the people that crafted it or that are running the craft understand the the complexity of it, but it's all like human psyches and everything playing against each other. They I don't even think I don't even think they know it. It's so multi-generational that like nobody alive now was alive when it was started or even when it was in the middle you know we're in some kind of end game now and everybody that's involved in maintaining the deceptions was born into them so i yeah. i agree i agree it's like nobody's it's like we're, we're all on some ship that somebody else set on a course long ago and even the people yeah. man, manning it that they're just kind of uh working the gears or whatever but they can't they can't change the direction uh too much it's like what they'd say in the movies, plausible deniability. Yeah, they're always keeping that. Yeah. They're doing it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, when, when you keep uh, space, they keep, keep middlemen in between you and whatever you're doing, you can always have that plausible deniability. They're, they're good at uh, making sure they have that. That's really what presidents and the whole political system is, is uh, middlemen between the real power brokers and the people. And uh, just uh, and the media machine puts them out there, and then anytime you get bored of one or or one of them gets exposed for something, they just prop up a new one, saying whatever yeah. the re- rhetoric of the day is. Usually it switches from one. left to right every four years. You know, oh, we want a conservative now. Oh, they want a liberal now. Okay, whatever they want, just <laughs> give it to them. <laughs> <laughs> and it gives them more credibility because they get to destroy the wrong one. Yeah, well, you know, that um, main symbol of the 33rd degree is the uh, eagle with two heads looking on both wings. So it's like they've they got control of the left and the right. And, uh, you know, the real power is behind the scenes is the, the two headed Janus, uh, the god with with two faces, um, which is what all Freemasons become once they take the blood oaths. Because you're you're now two faced. You can only be your true, authentic, hundred percent real self with your brothers, with whom you've sworn the oath, and everyone else is outside of that, outside the lodge. You can't be your full, authentic, true self anymore because you've got all these secrets that you've sworn to ki- to keep now. So uh, it's like um, they're creating split personalities. You know, when you're, or, you know, one of the things you talk about on your channel that I I like about you and and you recognize is a quality in yourself is just how honest and straight a shooter you are. And when you go into one of these clubs, you become forced to be a liar. You know, me too. I mean, I'm into the truth movement. I'm in my life. I like to be truthful, be honest. And so these people are the antithesis of people like us in the sense that they're willing liars and, and blood oath bound sworn liars and they they had the choice not to be right everybody cannot swear these oaths if they decide that being an authentic honest human being is more important than being a liar in the in group but these people have all decided no i want to be in the in group and i'll, I'll take the oaths you know because it's going to get me power and then whatever else they think it's going to bring them I wonder what that yeah. number is how many people are are there at the little thing be oh, well you know i've been thinking about it and yeah i'm, I'm not down well, anymore they just do pancake breakfasts and the shriners just ride in their go-karts yeah. there's nothing there's nothing bad man it's it's just so crazy i mean i don't even think that the the bad stuff or the lies are are hard for for anybody to see, I, I think it, I think everybody sees them. I, I just don't think they they can accept them or or they, they dismiss it. Like maybe they think it's that it's not important. Yeah, no, I think it's a uh, kind of Stockholm syndrome, but on a, a world level with the government. So, you know that syndrome where you get kidnapped and then you start identifying and even helping out your captor um i think that's what it is because the governments are basically like a mafia a protection racket but they're also the main 
violence, you know, force of violence and coercion in the world. So who are they protecting us from? Them. And, yeah. and, and when when do you need their protection? When you go against them. <laughs> so so you can't get their protection when you go against so it's it's like an oxymoron. Um but and it's like people subconsciously know that. So I think that's why everyone has this kind of inherent Stockholm syndrome for the government where they know it's wrong. They think of it as a necessary evil, but they're not they can't really elucidate why it's necessary, at least not to somebody who uh, understands the tenets of voluntarism, which would, you know, because that's really the only thing that's necessary is you can have bureaucracies and, and groups of people trying to help out um, with um, um, land distribution and money distribution and things. But the second it becomes mandatory and the second you have violence and coercion backing up your bureaucracy, you can call it democracy or republic or whatever you want, but they're all dictatorships at that point And it's just a facade because they have a monopoly on violence. Yeah, and the it's not public opinion either because nobody gets the right information. They they all get it from from the government owned or or over licensed licensed I, media. But I don't even I don't even really think it's the. I mean, on paper it is the government. I mean, I've seen the the people you know exposing that the government writes the news articles for them and they just say it and. It's all programmed like that, but I think there's somebody above them too that you know is kind of all doing it all. But everybody knows what they told them. They mm -hmm. don't. Know, they don't know the truth. It's like it's time to buy shorts. It's time to buy pants, and and you can only choose left or right. You can't. You can't go in the middle. All these things are are designed. It, it's. I don't see the, I don't see any freedom in it. It, it right. is a total dictatorship. Like what I've noticed in Thailand was they have grocery stores, but the grocery stores really, nobody needs to go there because everything that you need is at the local store, you know, or at the market there. Yep. And it, it's, it's just a, it's more of a, it seems more along the lines of the way that they live their lives like everything is is kind of barter and 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 almost like a do-it-yourself more of a a natural uh community like they say it takes a village to raise a, a child or something like that it feels right. more like a village to me absolutely because of those markets and, yep. and i think that i think that's a big positive and and i i don't really know if they, if they know it or not but i think that really helps them Absolutely. They, they're trying to bring that back a bit in America with what they call farmers markets. But they're, yes. so few, they're so few and far between compared to the big supermarkets and the Walmarts and that kind of stuff that it would take a real overhaul to get America back to that kind of market style vi village living. I, I, I think it. Yeah. And I think it's kind of locked in because of the the whole business model. You have to the the way that we're locked into being slaves is is like um you, you could do everything that you need to do to live your life but you wouldn't you wouldn't have time to go to work yeah. you know so you could either you could do either or you can't really do them both i I've, I've been trying to to work it and i really have an optimal schedule for it but uh it, it's so hard. You you just can't do it. You have to you have to kind of commit. But the the business model, it's like these people can only grow a little bit of vegetables, like in their yard or something like that, and it, and they don't make any money that way. Right. So they can't afford to do it. It's like a it's like a chain that that you don't even see that that holds you back from from even trying to escape the. <laughs> thing like that so I, I i agree i see a lot of people trying to do it and what's kind of helped i think is like the communities coming together instead of like 
uh, this family sells the eggs or this family sells the bok choy or whatever it's called, you know, uh, which is kind of the way I saw it in Thailand uh, or uh, this guy's a fisherman or, or whatever. They, they just kind of all come together and, and donate time, the, the fraction of time that they have and, and, and pay it into a community garden. Yeah. But it, it seems like that's taken off and, and I, I'm happy. About, I mean, people are trying. I don't think I don't think anybody really wants this system anymore. I, I, I think we're, we just feel stuck and nobody nobody can see a, a way out of it. It's it's just too hard. Like when I would talk to my mom about about the things that that I that I hear about and that are encouraging from from your videos because you you don't think anybody else is thinking these things. Uh, but when I try to talk to her about it, she she would deep down she would feel the same way. But it's like oh well, what am I gonna do about it and and mm. this and that and what are you, I, I would get a lot of times and and it was kind of a thing that would make me feel like like I was doing something wrong but people would be like well what are you doing about it you just talk about it and I kind of I don't know maybe it was out of desperation to to say to myself that I was doing it right but uh I I kind of decided that talking is 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 the thing that everybody can do and should do Right. Um, it, even, even more so if you feel like you can't do anything else, all you right. have to do is support the people that can. Right. And and uh, if if you if you don't know, you don't need to be like, well, you. What if you were lying to me? Like I, I would hear so many times. What if Eric Dubay is lying well, about the flat Earth? And it's like, why the hell would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> and if it if it was a lie and if, if he was lying about it and somebody wanted to to end his lie reign about it then why don't they just step up and tell the truth oh great thing well, about the flat earth conspiracy is that it doesn't matter if somebody's lying because you can test it all for yourself it's not yeah. like it's not like most of the other conspiracies where you have to rely on eyewitness testimony and other things where you know people can be lying and you can be dissuaded or discouraged or um, you know disinformed based on that. But with this, no, because you can do all the experiments and test for yourself. So whether somebody's lying or not doesn't even matter. But of course, like you're saying, these things are more excuses than anything else. They're more like little things people say to rather than looking into it further. They just throw up these things. And I think that's more what it is. It's like, well, what could I even do anyway? It's like, well, I still have to go to work in the morning anyway. It's those mm -hmm. typical excuses. Uh, but yeah. if they really, if they, because if they really thought about it, then it doesn't make much. If they really thought about it, well, uh, yeah, of course I still have to go to work in the morning. What does that mean? Or if they really thought about it, yeah, actually talking about it is exactly what is needed because you know the first thing, the first step to any sort of mass movement is to create the mass movement and how does that happen except through exposure mm -hmm. so you have to start talking about it and making a big fuss about it making a big noise about it that is the first step and until you have a big group that can actually go out and do something then you're you're putting the cart before the horse talking about like well, what are we gonna do well hold your horses i've already been into this for a while and i'm still at the talking stage you're just finding yeah. out about this right now and you're asking me what's the what's the next step <laughs> hold on hold on <laughs> the next step is talking we gotta get everybody else on board first including you it, it it's so weird i i always oh but i i did want to when, when when we were talking like that i i did want to say that that's that's one of the greatest things another great thing that uh that I, I found from the Thai culture and uh, like Buddhism and things like that is uh, the middle way. They, they Lots of Buddhists always tell me the, the middle way. Right. I, I don't know. Oh, I, absolutely. I just, we, we have to have some of these things, but uh, it, it's, it's what we do of them, I guess, that 
that makes it abusive or controlling? Well, in most areas of of thinking and, and acting in life, the middle way is much more. Um, I mean, it's just going to be a the better option than either extreme almost all the yeah. time. And you can yeah. think of it in like po the political sphere, for instance, or how you're saying like the West could use some of this Eastern thinking. Well, look at how divided the West is and how like on all news stations, like they have somebody on this side of the table on this panel and on the other side of the table and their thinking is on purpose, completely opposite. And then they have them hash it out back and forth. And that's what is, you know, uh, good content now at newsworthy content. And it's similar to the political um, factions with the left and the right side and the people that are more extreme on either side tend to go too far. And so a, a central position is generally a bit more, uh, you know, logical and, yeah, I, I, uh, and, and um, emotional, not just logical, but like as far as humanity is concerned, you're more fulfilled. You're more inclusive. You know, yeah. if, if, if you go way off on one extreme, all you're doing is setting up this opposition that's going to make somebody else go way to the other side and the other extreme because of what you've done. So instead of doing that, just trying to find the middle way is going to make your opposition naturally kind of come towards the middle as well. Whereas if you veer towards the extreme, you just someone else is naturally going to go the other extreme. So there's like real wisdom to that philosophy in that you might you know, when people get fanatical <clears throat> about something, you think that the way to cause change is to be extremely that way. But anytime you go extremely too far in one direction, the universe just has this yin yang way of creating something equal and opposite in the other direction <laughs> to fight against you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> so <clears throat> like the, the, the Tao says, oftentimes the best way to fight is to wait until uh, it, in one of the passages it says something about like, can you wait until all the problems of the world have just solved themselves before you act? If you can, then you're the true master. And it's like, uh, so the true master doesn't do anything and just, just accepts that the world is Sorry, you know, as, as bad as it is, is fine. It's funny the way, the way everything works i don't you see i i have this problem where i don't know how anybody takes anything i mean i can't you and i have similarities but i can't even tell you the thing that's in my mind you know i can't like we were like i was saying with the telekinesis or whatever it's called uh that that would be too perfect, wouldn't it? I mean, it would be total understanding. And why why shouldn't we have that if we're all really the same thing? There's a, there's a theory out there that <clears throat> language corrupted that and that there was a time before we used this kind of language yeah. and that at that point we were tele telepathic. I believe it. It's possible. I'm a, I'm a, I can't even imagine not thinking in language. Can you actually imagine what it would be like to not know English or any language, but to be in this world? What, what would thinking be I like? I try to. And what would communication to. be like? We try to think what it would be like, but we're thinking in language. So we really can't even conceptualize of what it might be. And mm -hmm. it very well may be that language is a devolution in consciousness that and that beforehand we were telepathic and you know living a completely different type of life than we do now and something mm -hmm. as seemingly beneficial as language could actually have been the fall of man like they say in the bible with the tower of babel and the, the babel is the language that we're all babbling on about with all these languages rather than just being telepathic 
like we probably were at some point mm -hmm. and we all understood each other. We didn't have to use all these symbolic things called language to try and convey meaning because meaning was just inherent and there at all times. Wouldn't that be amazing? And wouldn't 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 the Tower of Babel be a, a metaphor? For, exactly. For like if if we if we the collective we were were God and we divided ourselves up and put ourselves down here but had that that perfect of communication we would figure that out in a in a second and it probably ruins the experience if if, if we were like that mm. so i don't i don't know um but I, i'm not i'm not meaning to go against i i want i want the first way <laughs> <laughs> I, w I was just trying to relate it to the to the tower of babel i mean i I think that would be awesome, but who knows? I, I don't know my plan. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, where the hell did we come from? It, it mm. has to be instant in my mind. I mean, it has to be from mind in my mind rather than yeah. being from some physical explosion or any other sort of physical explanation. Definitely. Right, we Definitely. have to come from the non-physical. There's something immaterial before the material. So and something con physical consciousness. makes makes something uh, unphysical. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like how how could something exploding make make our soul and right. and and our our spirit our awareness? Our, yeah, yeah, our awareness and <clears throat> all of the, it. It it wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it just came because of the. The crap in the mud puddle all came together right. and had a party and it made you no like a big didn't. explosion causes us to be aware i'm thinking of like every hollywood movie where the cool guy like every explosion he does the opposite of be aware of it he just like walks <laughs> away super cool <laughs> but <laughs> the, yeah, it's it's the universe is the opposite you know the big bang happened and then awareness happened because it was so amazing this explosion that we just had to have consciousness come into existence to observe it the alpha guys just walking away in their void universe i don't even care about that big bang <laughs> <laughs> i don't even care i'm not looking <laughs> I don't know. Hey, so much. It's not like a. It's a good problem, and and I don't have any any dislike or anything like that from it. But from from the flat Earth, and then the flat Earth gained my trust in you because of the honest way that you did it, and and. And then the other things that you you said reaffirmed the trust and, and it helped me to go to a better understanding of the world through like this uh, I loved the um the the mind your spiritual tab thing, you know, the the mind all all the I can't the titles are, are really I'm drawing a blank right now, but Consciousness is king. I've probably seen a hundred times, and and the the material world one and all, all of those are are just really so freeing. Um, it, when you realize that this stuff is is not what they say it is, that the things that they say carry no they carry no more weight. I mean. I already know if 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 you tell me that 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 you think you live on a planet for some reason, um, I, I either know you're a liar trying to convince me for some some unknown or unneeded reason, or, or you're ignorant and you're just following what everybody else is saying, and and that's a that's a proven thing is people have a really hard time going against the group um people will go against their morals and all sorts of things but uh the the spiritual thing really helped me to realize 
that I, it's it's not what they say it is. You you aren't. There's a higher purpose to it. It's not to come here and do a job. And the people say, oh, well, find the job that you love. Uh, when you find the job that you love, it turns it into the job that you hate. Mm. Uh, it, it, it does. The, the system, you can't do it in the system. Like if you love to do art, then you have to do it for money. Mm-hmm. And And no artist wants to do it for money. I mean, maybe people that think that they can do art or pretend like they can do art or pretend to do art can make money and that's the reason why they want to do it but that's lying to yourself and they know they know why they're doing it it's uh i don't know it it really helped me to to grow as a person and i'm still doing it (laughs) it's tough to live in the world with or without money because everybody only does their job to make money even if you love it you wouldn't do it the way you do it to make money you know money is this obsessive thing that you have to do to live so you have to obsess about your job and you know 40 hours a week or more and you live your way your life in an obsessive compulsive way that would never happen if this thing called money didn't exist right if there was no money um you you at first first thing is everybody would homestead and i think that's one big way that we can get back to a more natural way of living and away from the new world order style of corporatized everyone living in the city uh, buying from supermarkets if we can get back to people being more self-sufficient in every way possible every way that that you know like you you call it diy in your videos all the time do it yourself yeah anything you can do yourself that you can be self-sufficient with means that you're not outsourcing it to some other group that can take advantage of us all, like the government or corporations. Mm -hmm. And so when we get together in small villages, like we were talking about earlier, like they do so well here in Thailand with markets and other um, small businesses, the corporate, you know, arm, strong arm, when it tries to reach into those little villages, it just doesn't really succeed because they're already doing everything they need efficiently without that system coming in there and and doing it for cheaper or or whatever whatever way they they think that they can get in there because yeah muscle in but before money what we were talking about earlier before money well how could they ever do it cheaper they had to create this whole monetary system to even get us off from that more natural way of living and in that natural way of living how could you have a job you know there's no such thing as job or work there's just living your life doing your thing and and everybody's thing would be more similar than it is now now we're super specialized right with especially with college Mm -hmm. and everything we have become super specialized human beings uh to the point that we're no longer holistic so you got these people that maybe are really knowledgeable about feminism and women's studies but they don't know um how to you know do their hair (laughs) how to make long hair or not not have it be blue and not have nose rings and tattoos no i'm just (laughs) but no but meaning and you know maybe they don't know how to do farming and they don't know how to build a house and all these other things neither do i to be honest but and these are problems you know we should know how to farm and how to build a house and how to make clothes and how to do these real fundamental necessities of living and the fact that modern society has super specialized us out of knowing really simple survival tasks i I lament it all the time it's like yeah you know what i mean the the idea that everyone says this is a simulation what do you think of simulation theory do you think it's a simulation and i was comparing that to maya the idea that all of reality is a an illusion and so the the this most recent matrixy simulation idea is the exact same thing as the most ancient Vedic concept of this reality as being an illusion. So I think even people, because a lot of these NASA type people and, and whatever that are coming up with simulation theory and whatnot. So it's just coming right back around to the same thing. They try to get rid of all spirituality or non-material 
explanations um, for for how things could be. But then you just come right back around to yourself because you can't divorce reality from the spiritual nature, from the awareness that perceives it. You know, consciousness is absolutely fundamental. Everything happens within consciousness and you can posit something might happen outside of consciousness, but we can't experience it. We can't know it. Everything we know and experience happens within consciousness. So um, it makes sense that the entire material world is within consciousness. So in other words, it's like all this is just happening within the mind of God and we are a subjective packet of that mind of God. And we're in this simulation, this illusion, this illusory 3D reality, pretending that we're individuals when in reality, the only real thing is the entirety, which is what we really are, which is God. And we're the mind of God or infinite awareness or infinite consciousness because the, we don't care for the word God, as we were saying earlier, something something like that. Yeah. Pure, pure awareness. The, the, the main premise that keeps coming to, to my mind about all of this stuff is um, that everybody everybody seems to know i think i think it's like i mean they don't they don't know but they know like all it's hard to get people to admit this but all my life as i've been growing up um like my mom won't admit it especially but uh everybody around me was like oh i don't trust the government the government does this the government does that well, they hate the government because of the potholes and this or that. They, they nepotism, the, you know, the backhanded deals and all these things. But they don't do anything about it. There, there's, there's money economists and and things like that, and they, they don't understand how the money is made and all that. It, it, it really makes me lose kind of faith in, in humanity because. I think they they know too. They they have to be going against us all for their own personal gain. Like they don't know that the economy is going to crash. Mm. A lot of people they they know that the government's corrupt, and and if you ask them, do they trust the government? They they'll say they won't. But then every yeah. week when the current events come on, the news comes on, they believe yeah. and trust pretty much everything they hear. And then when you tell them something other than that, they scoff and call you a conspiracy theorist. But then you, yeah. you ask them again, but I thought you said you didn't really trust the government and you know that they're involved. Well, yeah, but not that. So everybody has like this uh, exception to the rule that they tell themselves that, yeah, yeah, there's exceptions to the rule. But ultimately, uh, most people still just I think they do trust the government. Not only trust, but feel that they need it. Like it's their they need it. Their their father figure that helps them when, when they're in in times you know in dire straits or something. They're gonna protect them. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have the government, then what about the country? The country would get invaded. Right. That's when always it? it. If you didn't have the government, <laughs> what about right? So it's always a fear based someone else has to solve the problem for me thing that they yeah. that the government is the placeholder for that so if you aren't afraid and you don't feel that someone else needs to solve your problems for you now why do you need a government crickets <laughs> yes right <laughs> and if 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 the, if we had like some kind of i don't know some kind of way to have ownership if there was no governments, then there would be like no borders. And if you're using the land, then that's your land. And exactly. And you can you can have as much as you can justifiably use. Right. Yeah. By, by the it? agreement from everybody else. <laughs> yeah, that's around the area. Exactly. And there's more yeah. than enough for everybody if we spread out in that way. The, the, the yeah. people thinking there's overpopulation is because we're so crowded in these mega cities. If you actually Which is agenda move. 2030. Right. That, and so how that, do we how do we is, get away from that? The is the, city. Right. So we gotta spread out. And while we're spreading out, we gotta 
go back to nature and create our own food and DIY like we were talking about before, self-sustainability so that we don't keep relying on daddy government to solve and, and mommy corporation to solve all these problems for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a, it, it's really funny. Uh, the answer is just like right there, but everybody is just so scared to do it. They're, I myself included. It's so hard. It's so hard to with the. I, I say it a lot, I guess, but the two systems they just don't meld together very well. It's so hard to get anything done. I. I have to live my life and, and I try to, like I'm trying to build a, a waste oil burning stove because the restaurant that I that I work at, we we have a fryer and we we change the fryer every week and it's, it's like 20 gallons of, of fryer grease. And all I have to do is filter it and I can burn it all for free mm. in, in recycled things. I got a, a water heater, a, an old gas water heater that I cut all up and took the guts out and I, I got a, a cheap old water welder that I'm trying to, you know, weld it all together and build the little basin, the, the drip thing. I mean, it's so basic, but it, it's like problem after problem. <laughs> I don't know. With the, with the regular life. Oh, this, now it's a holiday and you have to do this. <laughs> oh, you, you don't get paid until this day, and you have to pay your rent, you have to pay your gas, you have to pay your water, your electric, and all this. I mean, what the hell? <laughs> right? Such a stressful, yeah. unnatural way of living that everyone's going along with without, most people don't even think about what the alternative is. You're calling it two systems. One is the unnatural system that has been imposed upon us. And the other would just be the natural way of living without all of these weird imposed systems like time and money. Time yeah. is money. When we were talking about that, I was thinking that because like time and money are two concepts that don't exist in nature as far as 24 hour time, you know, hours and minutes and seconds and all these things. Those in the week, all these concepts, the Gregorian calendar and money itself. If we were, if we lived without just both of those things, for example, those two fake concepts, the reality would just be so much different, so much more peaceful and relaxed. And I would, I would say that you could just go without, without the money, and and time would just fall away because there's exactly. no need for it. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Right. It, it's the, yeah, the money, money is a big one, I think. And, and that's crazy. I mean, it, in in the stuff that you've seen, what, what's the deal? It, is the birth certificate, it, that that's a, a bond on the stock exchange? Is that bullshit? What, 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 what are your feelings on that? I, I mean, it seems to be what's going on. I don't know that you can actually cash it out like some people are saying. But, yeah, I've uh, seen that too. Yeah, and that um, looks like a scam. That really does look like a scam. But the the birth certificate itself being the basis of the admiralty law scam, that is for for sure. Like there really is a a false or what would you call it a a, sh a shitty system of law being imposed over common law, like just regular. Um, like there's only really three laws that need to be in place and instead we've got these all these statutes and codes is like 16 million i think now in america but wow they but all you need is right so you can't harm another person or their property that is something that, that you could have uh, adjudication over you can't steal from somebody and you can't break a contract so if, if you had courts just presiding over these three types of cases so that and uh, you know that means rape or, or any sort of injury to a person or property stealing and when you break a contract anything outside of those are victimless crimes so like when people get put in prison for weed or something uh, 
you just have a plant in your hand, like that. No, that's a victimless crime. The only crimes that have victims are those three I just said. You know, the, yeah. a car accident falls under one of those three. You know, anything you can think of as a that has an actual victim who needs compensation falls in those three things. So all these other 16 million that they've got now, there's no victim, and the person who gets compensation is the government. So the government is just making all these. Well, and the you know the judges and the lawyers and all the other people involved in the system. Government isn't yeah. even a person. It's just a government is a placeholder term for a bunch of people who have taken a parasitic job in a parasitic system that parasites off of everybody else. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right? But it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you put them in a sack, they would. Uh, they would be like. <laughs> A perfect explanation of a par uh, parasite. It would look just like a parasite, wouldn't it? Like a big leech. <laughs> just sucking on itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I... So, yeah, the... But... Okay. Yeah. So, I, I pretty much thought that, too. Um, because I, I've I've looked at it, and but there's... So, there's, like... When we get into that, then there's the the free man thing. Is that like that's that's underneath somebody too? That's like a system to be under, isn't it? I mean, even common law is still a system. It's a much older and more simple system of ju well, it judicial. Well, seems like a basic a basic necessity, but, but right. like the the one above your. You, you, I'm sorry. Common law is what it, the three laws. I think so. I'm not even 100% sure. This is something I'm, you know, I've been studying on and off for quite a while, but it's so deep. That, that, that could be the terminology we use. Yeah. So that one, and and then, the, like the free man law, all that stuff is like putting putting somebody else's law on top of those three basic laws that are, have to be there, you know, it's like well, that's, the core laws. That's what the Admiralty Maritime Law is, that in the courts now that are used, when you go in there and they, they call you and you're all capital name, and you, you go in and you for your victimless crime, uh, that's under this type of law. It's not even law, they call it color of law, or legal but unlawful. And the, so the free man on the land or sovereignty movement stuff is just this kind of, um, it's, it's not a separate system. It's just acknowledging the systems that are in place and maneuvering within them. Ultimately, freedom would be beyond common law even. But like you just said, even in, when, once you get beyond like the village size, once you're in like a small town, size you, you really need a system of judicial management otherwise it's i mean it's just going to get really because i mean yeah. stuff hap this stuff happens people are going to steal people are going to break contracts people are going to um hurt, hurt each other and, and their property and all this stuff and if you don't have a, a working system in place to deal with it then you're going to get vigilante rebellious style ways of dealing with it instead and that's what freedom is, actually. And I'm not necessarily fully against that, because in a sense, um, you should always have that, that ability. I don't like the fact that in, in a lot of crimes, the victim doesn't get the opportunity to solve it the way he wants or to forgive the person if that's what they want. Yeah. They ultimate, ultimately, if you know when things happen in this system, the affected party is powerless in the decision it's like the system already made the decision as to how you're going to be compensated and what's going to happen to the other guy and you're just there along for the ride and so that i don't mm -hmm. like and i'd rather have actual They're vigilante freedom for, than that for, exactly for money. but if uh, we had a I, simple system like this three law system i'm talking about i think that you know as long as it didn't become corrupted the way it has to this day that could work on a small scale or, or at this least get back to something like that. As with everything New World Order-ish, trying to go upscale everything to a one world thing, the solution is to downscale to community small branches of things. You know, that's mm -hmm. difficult to control. 
and it's relevant to the people around. Whereas something huge is irrelevant because you just got these few internationalists dictating to everyone uh, and they don't know what's happening to, you know, this guy in Timbuktu and in Max in Alaska and Eric in Thailand. How is this person at the UN supposed to make laws that are relevant to all of us? Yeah, they can't. Yeah, I, I, that that's exactly a good point. Um, everything is di different, like from different counties to different states and things like that. Um, the the democracy is. I think a lot more people are accepting it now, but it, it's it's really unfair, um, especially when it's when it's ran by by people under the idea of of using others is is acceptable in, in in the ways that they do, and so that be that it makes this it makes a big big mess of it all <laughs> everybody <laughs> it, it, it trains everybody to want to to want to use each other and, and like i think about it all the time like people people think that like i i use this as an example i don't i don't necessarily believe that this is something that's going to happen but i say you're not going to be one of the 500 million left on the earth you're you're just not the the odds of that are 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 really really small you know one you're gonna be one out of 500 million out of what eight billion mm -hmm. that is it's just not gonna happen so no matter how much you use or anything like that all you're doing is making it better for those <laughs> big main users that 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 profit off of everybody stabbing each other in the back and 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 just using each other oh my mm -hmm. gosh i don't know but uh th i think that this is the the spirituality is probably my favorite and before i got into it because honestly i have to say that i didn't get into the spirituality until the last of of where i was just so desperate of an Eric DeBay video that I, I, I watched those, <laughs> I watched those videos, <laughs> but, but after that, it, it, it became my favorite. It's my favorite, but the conspiracy was my favorite, but now I'd say it's my second favorite tab on, mm. on your, uh, on your playlist. Playlist. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, and I love all the flat earth stuff. Oh my gosh. I've, I've seen it all. Like I've said, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say hundreds of times because before before I got active where I made my own videos, I, I would I would still walk my dogs. I would I would still go go and smoke a bowl and I would watch your videos every morning before I would go to my slave job and and luckily I had he was a Christian and it, it, he was really cool. He he's a good friend of mine. Uh, he was uh, the from around there, you know, the Hmong, H-M-O-N-G. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's he's one of them. Uh, his last name is Vang. He's he's a good friend, but he was a Christian now, and and but he was so much fun to talk to because he would accept it all. He never he never said any of it was crazy, and 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 the people would, you know, take it in. Yeah, the the conspiracy was really cool. I think there there was a, a video in there that I don't even want to say the name and everybody should know what it is, but that, that really changed my life too. That, that was kind of hard though, because it, it also, it was like an eye opener. Like when in the beginning, looking at, at flat earth, it, people are against you, but they think you're stupid. Mm. Um, they think it's like something to ridicule, but mm -hmm. the other stuff, the other stuff really makes people mad. Um, I mean it, and and they really start to judge you, like like the Jesus things and 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 other stuff like that. It, I'm not, I know for myself that all that stuff is right and and true, but um, 
it it got me into some places where it it, it kind of because of the way that the other people were not because it was wrong or anything but because of the way they were it, it kind of made it a hard battle for me to win their uh support and mm-hmm. in, in, in things that i was saying i i have mixed emotions i uh I, I really feel like like you've had to take uh like what you want has has had to take the back seat of 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 your endeavor to because of of your popularity and and your honesty and and all that you know it's rightfully so but it, it it's holding you in a place i i feel and and, and hopefully you don't feel it too bad but uh, it, it, it's a it's an admirable it's an admirable task that you've you've uptaken and uh, you you do a great job of it. it Thanks, man. Um, it, it it's hard to not be liked, but you know, honestly, maybe like like Mary says, I I think we're kind of the same. Maybe it's Mar- Mary and I are kind of the same, but I don't know. Uh, I really don't care if if I'm like I I almost like it better. It's like I get more attention if if I'm if I'm like and I don't mean this the wrong way, but if I'm like feared, you know, uh, don't oh don't talk to him. He'll he'll change your mind or something like that. I, mm-hmm. I don't know. I I don't mind being as long as I'm right. I I don't mind being totally different than everybody else. But yeah. uh. But but it is, you see that that's where it gets to be. I, I think you are that way, and and it it seems to me like I would be I would be hard. Like when when I made a video about about a snowy drive here, I I, I had sixteen thousand views on it, mm. and I, I've got I've got a lot more subscribers, and that's the only thing that I could really imagine was really the thing because i've seen like like when when you put a when you put a a video of mine onto your channel it on your in your favorites playlist i i got a lot of subs then and it it took me out of like the the four range and and maybe people are just watching i don't know but it it really seemed like i got a whole bunch of subs from that video i i don't know and it, it set me it set me in this moral dilemma where I I started feeling like I I, I want to I want more subs or I want to I want to make money on this or something like that. And and I felt myself like going through these battles and, and not even knowing that I was going through them. And, and so sometimes, you know, you just want to make yourself happy. So. Mm-hmm. If you're going through a battle and you don't know that you're going through a battle, you you could falsely make yourself happy and then not be not be ultimately happy with it. You know, you could be going against yourself, so you can't mm-hmm. have happiness. Mm-hmm. And so then I I kind of just gave it up. Like, who cares about how many people you know like me or whatever? <laughs> they like me. They like me. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then I just kind of went back to myself. But I I. I still try to help. I mean, if there's people that hold on, I may, maybe I could influence some people. I, I tried sometimes because the, the YouTube thing studio, it, it says that people watch very, very short amounts of my videos and they're usually like 45 minutes long. So I, I'm not like thinking anybody's doing anything wrong. And it's also an average, but uh, I, I started saying like the earth is flat in the beginning when I, <laughs> when I start the video, to, to catch their attention or something and maybe the ones that don't don't won't accept it maybe they'll just get turned off and go away and and the ones that do maybe they'll stay and be like oh okay this is a weirdo <laughs> i mean not because i say that. yeah well because they don't know and because i say the earth is flat <laughs> yeah i <laughs> think we both uh, know it is. when once you i i got you in the playlist and then um you get more subscribers it's like you make a little dip into the youtube algorithm 
and I think what happened was probably you titled a video, the Snowy Drive or whatever it was, was something that clicked in their algorithm. So that one got recommended to a whole bunch of new people. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's what happened. And that's, I mean, that happens to me on occasion as well. It happens to, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, that's how the YouTube algorithm works. If you're going to grow just through YouTube, that's how it happens. It's through these, you spike an algorithm like that, and then you'll get delivered for a short period of time. And within that short period of time, hopefully you'll get some new subscribers. You, like that one video will get a shitload of views, but then all your other videos will be similar to normal. And it's like, and what happened? Well, what yeah. happened was you just got one of those little spikes and it's real random because you're gonna, now it'll, and you never really know when the next one's gonna be because it doesn't really have all that much to do with you or what you're doing. It has way yeah. more to do with uh, YouTube's ever-changing algorithm and what they choose to do with it. The thing it's you so can control it... is the, the thumbnail, the titles and description and tags, but no matter how well you make those four things, it's not any guarantee of you getting into their algorithm and going viral. Yeah, the, uh, it, it, for, for somebody starting out, uh, uh, it could be so, so addictive because you don't really, there, there's no way to really understand it. I tried for a while, like thinking, oh, okay, well, it's this. And then I would like all the stuff that you, you mentioned, uh, I would try it, you know, and different things and you would see like a difference. But then you try it again and it, it doesn't work or it's like you can't do it twice or mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I'm 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 in awe. I'm I'm in I'm perplexed. I, I really I I hate the system, but I mean you couldn't write you couldn't write a better slave program. You really couldn't. It, it's so perfect. We are owned so so tightly. I mean, it's like uh, Aldous Huxley said about how within the next few decades we'll have the ability to make them enjoy their servitude to the point they wouldn't even imagine rebelling because yeah. it, there are you know so many bread and circuses and entertainments and distractions like we have today uh, combined with the monetary system and the need to work you know, eight hours a day just to survive. When, when is the time left for you to find the truth about the, you know, everything, step one, and then step two, to rebel against it and create a better system? Like, who has that kind of time? <laughs> yeah. everybody's, so, everybody's so enslaved already in this ingenious system, like you said, that it's like we can't even, we don't even have the free time to think about getting out of it. <laughs> what was it? I'm pretty sure it was your video, but it might have been, you see, like, sometimes I see things on, on your videos and it, and it, and it's really interesting. So I want more. And so I have to go look for it. And, uh, I don't know if it was in your video or not, but the, the young kid in, in his past life, he, he, he went and he found his, his old flying buddy, mm -hmm. like from, from the war and, and, they were like, oh yeah, that guy, he died this way, and and he was like, it was him. Yep. Isn't isn't that kind of stuff weird? Absolutely. He uh, it was a reincarnation story, and he remembered all the people in the room, and he remembered the, their relatives' names and nicknames and things like that. That there's just no way this little kid could could know who wasn't. He didn't know anything yeah. about. I mean, he wasn't physic geographically near these people. But then once he met them, they were all convinced that he was their long dead friend, the, the airplane pilot. And there's a bunch of stories like that of kids that say they remember their previous life somewhere 100 miles away or something. And then when they're taken there, they're able to give directions, say old landmarks, things that used to be there but aren't there anymore. And then they're confirmed by uh, people looking into the history of those places. and all this kind of stuff. So whether they personally reincarnated or they tapped into that Akashic record we were talking about somehow. I think that's, 
I think that's it. Yeah, in the what it what is clear is that the information is still there, and people in altered states of consciousness or what have you. I don't know the exact mechanism that or mechanisms that work to allow people access, but. Uh, certain people in certain situations get access to it to the point that it's clear that it exists in some form, you know. To me, that that kind of affirms the the package, the package thing, like God divided. Uh, I don't. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure that. I don't really take anything that you say as like your belief, mm-hmm. because I feel like you're sharing things with us. Um, I don't. I don't. But it's like I purposely don't like, have beliefs. I've, yeah, I've, I've done away with belief. I find it to be a like a you know, in a song I wrote. I said, uh, "Believing's what you do when you really don't know." Yes. Yeah. So belief is like overstepping the bounds of knowledge. <laughs> Anytime you don't know something, but you you tend towards it, people will use this word "believe," but then they they put themselves in a box because once you believe something then now anything contrary to that you disbelieve but you don't actually have evidence for why you believe the thing in the first place because if you did you wouldn't believe it you'd know it and so people have insufficient evidence for the things they believe whereas I am content with saying I don't know things that I don't know and I don't want to believe something that I don't know because it's just going to delude me, right? Yeah. You're better off in that space of not knowing and being humble and and waiting to learn more rather than do you not go knowing theory? enough to know, but then say, I believe, and just going along with that. What do you replace it with? Do you replace it with like theory, like an I don't idea? know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, ultimately, you replace it with I don't know. But then within the I don't know, you can have any theories and, and discuss potentials and this seems more likely than that because of this. But if mm-hmm. you don't know it because you don't have empirical or experiential knowledge of it, then just believing in it, how is that advantageous to you or everybody else? It's, it's just yeah. a delusion, really. Don't you think all Not- beliefs are, are ultimately deluding yourself into into Definitely. like taking something you don't know and like boosting it into some because it like with like for Christians for example, their I think belief the box thing is they, a good they is lift, a good way to terminology it. They they lift belief into something like it's more than knowledge. Like if if you know that humans yeah. can't walk on water and snakes can't talk and you know that bushes can't um, you know <laughs> start religions and <laughs> and you know that men can't live inside of whales for three days and then come out evangelists if you know these things you can't believe in the stories that they talk about and they claim that that's your knowledge is below their belief that's where it really goes crazy to me because like most people when they believe something it's not it's not a big deal like i believe uh you know my father's gonna (laughs) gonna come home at the end of the day that kind of belief is much different than this belief in uh, some afterlife that they know, know nothing about or some deity figure that they've never met all these mm-hmm. kind of be- believing in these kind of things is unwarranted and it creates a psychosis really <laughs> yeah so it would be seems like this yeah. but could be something else my dad is most likely going to come home. <laughs> yeah, I tend to and I hate the word promise too because, like I don't like it when people in movies all the time they're always i promise the the the, they're promising things that they don't know whether that thing is going to happen or not they'd like it to and they want the other person to feel assured about it but ultimately if you don't know that you can do the thing promised i hate it when people promise things it's the same thing as believing it's like you're overstepping your browns just just say I'll try really hard to be at your little league game, Jimmy. I'm going to try my absolute best. Don't say I promise when you know that there's A, B, C, and D that could happen. You know what I mean? If you're going to yeah. promise, make make a promise something that you're sure you can't uh, break or whatever. But that's yeah, just 
I, and the proof I, I have is this in the hang up on, on integrity. I feel like integrity being true to your word is something that has just like fallen by the wayside of humanity in the internet age because you can you can now be everywhere anywhere you know what i mean like back in the day it's like everyone you were born somewhere everyone knows you and if you lie to this guy or you cheat on this woman or you steal from this person you have a reputation that follows you around everywhere yeah you're it's ruined like, you're mm-hmm. ruined it doesn't it's not really like that now though maybe it's coming back around to it with this with the internet now it's like people people that try to get away with scamming um they're found they're doxxed and stuff so in a way it's like it's come right back around to the fact that you can't get away with anything with the the internet generation so i'm not sure the problem i'm saying is a problem actually it's just uh our response to it seems to me I th- but then again i wasn't alive then i just feel like people had more integrity in times past but i don't know this and i feel like people nowadays don't have much integrity and it's not a focal point you know money or status you know those are the main focal points being a good person and true to your word and having integrity like that's that used to be a big thing right that used to be you know a, a man of his word there were sayings like that you know so being a man this was that's what it was to be a man you don't promise things you can't deliver you don't believe in things you don't know you don't you know uh, all, all these you don't things do it half ass <laughs> yeah right exactly but uh you do it to, you do it right because right? anything that's worth doing is worth doing right and all of those things yeah that's that's the way it used to be Kevin goes back to money i think because if you're if you're doing it for money well now you're just well the quicker the better you know let's get the job done quick you know it's not do it the best you can it's not take pride and integrity in your work because that takes too long and it, there's no real benefit to it except for this internal hang up that people like me would have on it that you can't let go of but if i did let go of it i'd be a lot more successful you know in the, this material world like everybody else that doesn't care so much about being a man of their word or integrity in these kind of concepts it, it reminds me of like uh, a builder guy told me but it kind of works for everything is you have a pyramid and and you can have it fast and 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 you can have it expensive uh, it'll either be fast expensive and and good right and 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 none of only two of them ever meet up. You can't have right. all three of them. Right. I mean, it would be way too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it was cheap. Cheap, fast, and good is what it was. Right. Cheap, fast, and good. You can't have it cheap right. and, it. and good without it being slow. Right. You won't get fast. But if you had it cheap and fast, then it won't be good. So it's it's one of those conundrums where the money just limits it that way. <laughs> right. That's right.